Hi there, welcome to another edition of IndyCar. I'm Gordon Ross and I'm in the West End today. And what is it today? The 5th, is it? Just double check, you know what me and dates are like. So, yeah, the 5th of November. Okay, so it's gunpowder, treason, and plot time. And uh, in sort of a fitting circumstance, really, um, to talk about how the, the British news media now regards Scotland, and also to talk a little bit about the rise and rise of Joe Swinson, the new. Um, all British yellow dressed um, female uh, Pride Ministerial uh, candidate that the media has now sort of latched onto in the UK. Uh, let's talk first of all um, about Joe Swenson, although I don't really want to do this, but Joe Swenson's been all over the news. Um, unlike the, the third party um, in the United Kingdom, the third largest party in the United Kingdom is invisible today. However, it's fine for the fourth largest party to get all the media coverage. So Jo Swinson is on the front page of newspapers and she's in all of the um, online editions as well, spouting forth about how she is going to be the next Prime Minister and also how she thinks there's going to be a £50 billion dividend um, for remaining in the EU. They've calculated that Liberal Democrat sort of calculator central that um, if the UK remains in the U uh, European Union, then over a period of about five years, it will save approximately £50 billion. Now, this is not actually money that we're going to receive. This is money that she alleges that we're not going to spend. So it's a little bit like the so-called you know, £350 million that we're going to save it every week by leaving the EU, which Boris Johnson plastered on the side of a bus, um, and which has later you know, emerged to be a fantasy figure. And this figure of 50 billion, which seems to have been worked out on the back of an envelope, has appeared today. But is it in any way uh, likely to happen? Are we going to see a saving of about 10 billion pounds per year if we stay in the European Union? Well, certainly we are going to technically save money by not throwing it away, by Brexiting, but that's only if the Liberal Democrats, who are the fourth largest party, not the third largest, fourth largest with only 20 MPs, can somehow propel the yellow pearl of Joe Swinson um, into the top job at number 10 as some kind of, um, I don't know, some, some kind of new Margaret Thatcher clone um, in some kind of coalition with uh, the Labour Party and maybe the SNP. And Joe thinks that she's going to be a sort of in a, in a king-making position, but rather than making a king, she's going to make herself queen. I don't think it's going to happen for the simple reason that parliamentary arithmetic and the way the first-past-the-post system works does not favour a party which has scattered voters all around the fringes of the United Kingdom and the far reaches of places like Shetland uh, and the Highlands and other spots in, in leafy England, at places where basically there is not a large concentration of population. Very difficult for the Liberal Democrats <clears throat> to get anywhere near the numbers of votes they would need to, to get Joe Swinson anywhere near government at all. So I think it's unlikely, but well, she's going to keep lying about it anyway. The Liberal Democrats have been putting out all kinds of misleading leaflets with all kinds of fictitious bar graphs that show how wonderfully well they're doing in relation uh, to the, the SNP and how they, they alone can win. Don't believe a word of this. I mean, the, the, the claims that are being made are outrageous. But the bottom line is that the British political system, the way that we vote, the so-called first-past-the-post system, tends to favour uh, a party which has all of its supporters quite close to hand. In the case of the Conservative Party, most of its support comes from rural areas, comes from landowners, from people who live in big, wealthy places, who own lots of land, like farmers, and also fishermen as well, I guess, to some extent. But mostly it's landowners and people with money, uh, a lot of it. So it's businessmen, it's people who own land, and so on. So they are, they always turn out to vote as well. And also the older voter who tends to vote Conservative. The Labour Party tends to draw most of its power um, from the low to the, the lower classes, shall we say, the working class people allegedly of the United Kingdom and the working poor. But ironically, the Labour Party doesn't even seem to identify with people who are not working anymore. It's done absolutely nothing to help with um, 
people who are on benefits or people who are too sick to work or people who are disabled. The Labour Party has abstained on so many things. But they are interested in working people. And the Labour Party gets most of its power base through the unions. As we know, the unions um, are basically feeding more membership into the Labour Party. And we know that the Labour Party has the biggest membership of all. I think it's somewhere in the region of half a million people are actually card-carrying paid up members of the Labour Party, either through the trades union or by simply becoming a member. Who's going to win the general election? Well, who knows? But one thing is for certain, the SNP is not going to be appearing in British television debate shows. Because Sky News gave the game away. They let the cat out of the bag this week because they deliberately have shut out the third largest party in British politics, the SNP. And the reason is if you want to boil it down to the basics, is that the SNP is not British enough. They don't stand candidates in England, for example, or Northern Ireland or Wales. But then why should the National Party of Scotland, which exists to separate us from the Union, want to field candidates in any of those places? But this admission from um, Sky, Sky News, Rupert Murdoch's uh, flagship news programme, that they are shutting, deliberately shutting out, a major political party which has a huge presence in Westminster and is a member of this so-called union. The so-called union, believe it or not, only applies to Scotland and England. Northern Ireland is not in the union and neither is Wales. So just so that you know, it's only Scotland and England that are in the union. And Scotland is supposed by the Acts of Union to be guaranteed to be able uh, to take part in the governance of the United Kingdom, that means Scotland and England. And yet David Cameron, one of his first acts after the uh, independence referendum was so narrowly lost, was to create something called EVEL. Now EVEL stands for, you probably already know this, English Votes for English Laws. And this was a mechanism <coughs> Uh, introduced to Parliament, which meant that no sitting Scottish MP would be allowed to vote on any legislation which affected England, Wales and Northern Ireland. The idea was to racially segregate Scotland so it was not allowed to have any say over what happened in the United Kingdom at all. We were not allowed to have any influence over any policy in England, and yet the English MPs are allowed to legislate on all matters in Scotland which are not devolved. So we've gone from being in a union to being in a dictatorship and this is now further confirmation that the British media, which as we know is run pretty much for the convenience of the Conservative Party and in the case of the BBC is run partly by the Conservative Party, is now of the opinion that the SNP is not a British party and therefore will be shut out of the election debates on television. Now this is not just anti-democratic, this is in fact a, a form of the ultimate censorship. This is the, the Cinderella syndrome taken to its furthest extent to airbrush an entire nation out of the political discourse of the United Kingdom, to take Scotland and somehow draw a cloak of invisibility across its its political, uh, its MPs basically. Now remember we've got 35, or is it might even be 36, 35 MPs at the moment in Westminster, right? 35 MPs representing the interests of Scotland. Some of them anyway representing the interests of Scotland. But according to what Sky News is telling us, that the whole party and all of these 35 MPs have no say in the debate in the general election, even though the SNP is the third largest party in the United Kingdom and is fighting this general election alongside all of the other parties, it is to be shut out of the televised debate. Now this is clearly not just anti-democratic, this is vote rigging. This is a massive scale of vote rigging that we have never seen before anywhere in the UK. For an entire party to be made invisible like this by the state-run media, by the BBC, by also the right-wing media run by Rupert Murdoch, another Conservative donor, and the ITV, all of them snubbing the SNP because we're not British. Wow. Now that, just let that sink in for a moment. This is your media, the one that you pay your hundred and whatever it is, £48 a year 
to watch telling you that your country is not British. Now somebody should really tell all of the unionists who live in Glasgow exactly what the media thinks of them. That these people who claim to be unionists are actually not British. Right? They're not British. Scotland is not British. It's now confirmed what we all thought all along, which is that the British state regards Scotland as a foreign country. It is kept in the dark, it's fed nothing, it is airbrushed out of existence in just about every, in every major news bulletin. The Scottish National Party gets virtually zero coverage, unless it's bad news. I'm sure when Alex Salmond's trial comes up early next year, they'll be all over it. Um, probably the, the trial will happen before a referendum. And in that case, this, the British media will be straight in there. Uh, and all you'll hear is Alex Salmond this, Alex Salmond that. You can guarantee it. The media, we now know, has given the game away. The British state does not think of Scotland as British. Now, in many ways, that should come to a relief to us because they've now given up on Scotland. Politically, they've given up on us. Um, in the newspapers, in the media, they've given up reporting us. Either that or they've been told not to. We have, for the first time in our history in Scotland, our own media. We have media online such as this. We have the national newspaper, we have our own newspaper. We also have other newspapers which are not anti-independence, one or two of them. Um, and we also have our own television stations, such as uh, Broadcasting Scotland and, and others. We're not, uh, we're not unable to fight our own case anymore, but for Scottish MPs in the uh, Westminster electoral system who are standing in the British Parliament to be British MPs, to be told that the party that they represent is not British and therefore does not get to take part in the debate is not only uh, vote rigging, it's racism as well. I mean, we're being segregated. We're being told that we're second best, that we're not allowed to appear on the television because we are somehow unclean and tainted. We're not British enough. Oh boy, you're not British enough. You're not standing, you know, candidates in London or, or the home counties. So we, we can't possibly put you on English television and to put forward ideas which are alien to us from a foreign country. And that's what this is now about. The separation between Scotland and England is now at least complete in people's minds. The people of England now think of Scotland as a separate entity. It's, it's a country far, far away, if you like, which has nothing to do with England. And they are told that they're supporting it with their money. In Scotland, we know that we are a separate country, but not that we are being supported by England, but, but we are supporting England with our money. So the two countries couldn't be any more divided. Um, and we're now faced with a stark choice between having Boris Johnson decide for us that we're going to leave the European Union and with us having no uh, voice to speak on the television against it having no presence in the news shows to gainsay anything that the Tories, the Lib Dems or the Labour Party says. The Liberal Democrats uh, say that they're the only party which is anti-Brexit, and we know that is absolute tosh, and yet she gets away with saying it on British television. There is no SNP person there to say, but hang on a wee minute, the SNP is anti-Brexit as well. And who was it that stopped the prorogation of Parliament and who has held up Brexit for this length of time? It's been the SNP. It's been our MSPs, our MPs, our lawyers who have basically nailed Boris Johnson to the floor over Brexit and prevented it from happening so far. If, if Joe Swinson succeeds in stopping Brexit, it'll not be because of the Liberal Democrats. It'll be because of the groundwork done by Scotland on preventing it. A lot of people, there's, there's arguments in Scotland over whether we should support um, staying in the European Union or not. And much actually depends on what England decides to do. So as far as I'm concerned, um, if England decides to leave uh, and elect Boris Johnson by some bizarre quirk of fate and they decide to go with Brexit, then fine. But if that is the case, then Scotland will be going the opposite way because despite what a number, a small number of people in the Scottish independence movement have said, the Puritans, if you like, who want independence from everything, 
Scotland can't exist with independence from everything. It's too small to do that. We need trading partners. And if you compare us to Denmark, Sweden, Norway and so on, we come somewhere in the upper three of those countries. We, we are somewhere near the top in terms of our personal wealth and our ability to export per head of population. We are extremely high up the ladder. But we need to be able to trade in order to make use of that status, otherwise it's meaningless. So being in the EU, at least for the time being, would make sense. But if, as I say, the, EU, the European Union and uh, Scotland were to part company for some reason, then it would have to be under a free trade agreement because we need to keep somehow keep an open border with what's going to become the sort of right-wing fascist 51st state of America, which is what England's fate will be. Um, we'll need some kind of border between us and that country because uh, their standards are going to be so much lower than ours and there is going to be so much more poverty down there that there is bound to be a migration from England to Scotland. So it would be necessary for us probably to have some kind of free trade agreement rather than full membership eventually. Maybe not immediately, but it might be necessary to do that. Anyway, I'm rambling. The point I'm trying to make here is that something has changed, changed dramatically in the last 24 hours. And Sky News has given the game away. Scotland is not British. That's the attitude of the British news media. We're not British enough to appear on their television shows. And therefore, the Scots, uh, MSPs, MPs, Nicola Sturgeon, all of them could just sod off and let England decide the fate of Scotland for you because you're, you're not British. You're some kind of um, natives of some conquered province. I mean, I've, I'm beginning to feel like we're being treated like the Indians were treated during the Raj, or the Jamaicans were treated, um, you know, in, in the slave days. We are marginalised, we are kept down, and now, despite the fact that we have 35 MPs at Westminster, and despite the fact that we have a so-called Union of Nations and a Union of the Crowns, we are not acknowledged as being a part of the Union anymore. In other words, they're saying because we, you know, our party doesn't feel the candidates in England, that makes us illegitimate somehow. That means that we're not British. If that is the case, then what uh, the Sky News people are saying means that Britain, or England I should say in this case, has broken the Act of Union. They've decided that Scotland's a foreign country. It's not in their union with them. And therefore, it's not entitled to the same uh, political discourse, the same right to debate, the same right to be heard by everybody in the United Kingdom. Nobody is now allowed to hear what the Scottish people are saying. Uh, we're boring them. You know, they're fed up listening to us whining, so we're just going to be tuffed. That's it. Game over. The union's finished. We might as well leave it now because um, there's no way we're going to get a fair hearing from any of the television channels. They're going to shut us out. Uh, and that is very evident from the excuses made. Why the BBC, uh, for example, didn't cover Nicola Sturgeon's uh, speeches when they could have, when they referenced a fake uh, non-existent Scottish party called the Scottish Nationalist Party, which doesn't even exist, and yet they persist in saying this. There are reasons why things happen, but we've reached a point now where Scotland isn't British now. And I think we can honestly say that the whole British Union has basically petered out now. There's nothing left in it, there's no life left in it. It's not so much flogging a dead horse, they're basically beating it with clubs, and it, it it's not going to move again. The, the Union has died, and it's not been Scotland that's killed it. It's England that's killed it. England has decided that Scotland isn't British. If Scotland's not British because it doesn't stand candidates in England, then surely in Northern Ireland, the Tories, the Labour Party, they don't stand candidates in Northern Ireland. Does that mean Northern Ireland is not British as well? I think you have to apply the same standard to Northern Ireland. The Tories don't uh, don't put candidates up for Northern Irish election. Therefore, Northern Ireland isn't British either. So that's the way we have to look at this. The, the, the whole thing is breaking down into racist lines. It's England first, Scotland doesn't exist, Northern Ireland's not British either. And that is the way things look at the moment. 
And if that doesn't turn you off the union, I don't know what will. It's turned me off. I mean, the whole thing is toxic, unpleasant, racist in the extreme. And not only that, but they're rigging the entire uh, election from the start with the help and the overt help of people like Sky News. I'm going to leave you with that thought. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.